as we are going live to the United Nations Emergency Special Session. The 193 members of the organization debate on the military operations in Ukraine. The Syrian representative is expected to pronounce his government's take on the issue, as well as other countries who support Russia's claims. What's curious about today's session is that despite successive crises and major challenges that the international community has been facing for decades, and where the Security Council has failed to take on its responsibility for maintaining international peace and security, Western states have never demonstrated so much experience in calling an emergency special session of the General Assembly. This shows a politics of hypocrisy, of double standards, as well as one based on interests and not principles. The memories and the files of the international of the United Nations have ample proof of the many examples of illegitimate Western intervention and acts of aggression of the United States of America and their allies in, in NATO that have caused millions of innocent deaths in Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria. Not to mention the blockades that have been imposed on a number of peoples in Latin America and elsewhere to achieve their objectives. We haven't seen much enthusiasm for a session such as today's back then, far from it, quite the contrary. My delegation believes that this historic emergency session on the situation in Ukraine completes the anti-Russian campaign that finds its origins in the provocative and hostile rhetoric towards Russia propagated by the West to stoke tensions in Ukraine and to thereby compromise the security and territorial integrity of Russia. Mr. President, the Syrian Arab Republic underscores the importance of resolving regional disputes and international ones through dialogue and diplomacy and supporting the efforts to maintain security and stability around the world. We respect the principles of the United Nations Charter. The Syrian Arab Republic condemns the campaign organized and led by the West and their media against the Russian Revolution. In particular, the deliberate spreading of fake news, of insidious allegations, as well as photos and videos that have been doctored, all of this to, imprint, to prevent Russia from exercising its natural right to defend its sovereignty and its security, as well as to protect its people in line with the UN Charter. Some Western countries have gone as far as closing down Russian media. They have banned them to prevent the public in Europe from finding out what's happening. Since the coup in 2014, Western countries have ignored the historic links between the Ukrainian and Russian peoples. They have also ignored the suffering of the inhabitants of the Donbass region, the suffering that has lasted many years. These states deemed it more important to give NATO a zone of influence at the gates of Russia, leading to suffering in Donetsk and Lugansk. When Russia launched a special operation to protect the people there, these same states began a campaign based on the UN Charter and what it qualifies as humanitarian suffering in Ukraine, setting aside the deep-rooted causes of the crisis that they themselves are responsible for. It is a paroxysm of political hypocrisy. 
Mr. President, the escalation of the situation between Russia and Ukraine comes from Western states not respecting their commitments towards Russia, and that's been going on for decades. These states have ignored these legitimate security co uh, concerns of Russia and have not hesitated to provide weapons and missiles to Ukraine, showing tireless generosity and downplaying the effects of their decisions on regional security and stability. Nonetheless, the Russian Federation has always made pragmatic proposals and has demonstrated restraint in the face of American and European attempts as well as those of NATO to exacerbate the situation. These proposals though have been ignored and Russia's security concerns have not been taken seriously. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the United States and the West are resorting to once again coercive measures, unilateral coercive measures in contravention of international law and the UN Charter. These measures are simply fanning the flames and harming the people in the region. My country condemns the punitive measures and believes that being on the right side of history means rejecting the West's bellicose policies in order rather to preserve the interests of the peoples who oppose them and imposes their interventionism. Thank you. We were listening to Syria's representative to the United Nations, who was addressing Ukraine crisis and NATO's advance over the eastern region. The Syrian representative condemned the U.S. and NATO's interventionist and imperialist actions, from blockades and sanctions to war. He also said the crisis is part of an anti-Russia smear campaign and media narrative, and also asked the U.N. top leaders to find a pacific solution to the crisis and respect for the free decision capacity of all nations. He also said the West powers convening ignored the historical ties between Ukraine and Russia, as well as the suffering and claims of the Donetsk and Luhansk territories, and use Russia's defense to the Donbas people's rights to build up anti-Russian the Syrian official also said these war games by the West only led to the stabilization of global peace, not only by fueling hate, but also providing arms and war material. Telesur English will provide you with more details, and the U.S. Security Council holds this special session. 